Hello everyone and welcome back to the Sim Racing Online DNF Series 1975. I'm your host today, Matthias, and we have a, a company once again of Max Shepard, our main commentary guy. Hello. Uh, yeah, this should be a good race today uh, here at Longford. I did a lap of this track and uh, it's, it's quite scary, I'm saying that now, so yeah, should should be an interesting race today. Oh yeah, of course it should should be. This track is really really long. These cars benefit from a lot of power on the straights, and we should see a lot of guys getting into the slipstream, you know, attacking into the slipstream to get an, uh, an overtake. And uh, how difficult and dangerous this track is, we should see a really good battle and really close battles. You know, dangerous one, dangerous ones too. Yeah, I, I reckon it's going to be more about consistency rather than all the pace because it's a 60 minute race so it's quite a long race already mm. and this track is very narrow, it's quite bumpy as well so yeah, you might be affected by the bumps here quite a lot and uh, yeah, it, it just feels far too quick for these cars, these cars are far too quick around here um, I think they did this track in the 60s in real life um, so Yeah, it's, it's a 1967 track, you know uh, yeah, so it's uh, these cars are a little bit quick for this track, but um, it, it's fun when you nail it. But at the same time, it is just damn scary going around here just because of how narrow it is. Um, yeah, some parts of the track actually narrow to just about a car's width, just over a car's width. So it should be interesting to see if uh, drivers can race cleanly around here. Last time we had Bridgehampton, and um, it was actually a pretty solid race. We had a lot of battling throughout the field. Yeah, Bridgehampton was really, really good. I expect this one to be as equal, if not better, than Bridgehampton, you know, because we see a lot of not new names, but it's a little bit new to the top five. We see Roberto Bali in first place, uh, got his fastest lap once 57, and then uh, Gejan Vo Van Osh. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> And uh, followed by John Van de Geest, which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, qualified in the top five last round. Yeah, he had a really, really interesting race. He had a, a battle with, uh, I can't remember who it was, so many names to remember, but he had a really good battle um, in the last race, pretty much half the race until the other drivers span out. Oh, and yeah. um, it was Tony Talviti that came off with the win in uh, Bridgehampton, if I can remember. Oh yeah, the the driver that he was battling throughout the whole race uh, basically was uh, John and Johnny, I think. Johnny Gutierrez. Yep. Andrew Williams too, yeah, he caught it in it the was, it was Andrew, Yeah, it was Andrew Williams and, and then Johnny Gutierrez was just ahead, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing that I'm really shocked about is Michal Mazurek. He got pole position in last round and now he's on 16th. So I think that's a little bit of a catch-up race to do. Alviti is at the back as well. Oh yeah, Talviti had no practice. He was chatting with me uh, earlier on the uh, YouTube chat, live chat, and uh, he said to me that he was right off work when the, the qualification was starting, and he got no practice at all. So that's a oh, little bit in close the stream to chat. Talviti, yeah. Just in the stream chat, he said, haven't done a single lap just from work, but here we go. Well, oh yeah. So, uh, <laughs> He's starting at the back. Um, there's going to be a lot of crashes, I'm predicting, this race. Um, oh, yeah. Kind of like Bridgehampton, but I think even here it's got less room for error. Um, just because there's walls, very close walls. Um, and it's it feels a lot faster than Bridgehampton. And the runoffs are not... Uh, you cannot, like... Uh, you cannot do mistakes with this track, because the runoffs are, like... If you go off track, you're either going to crash you know, into a wall, or into a bunch of trees, or just spun out because of the grass, you know. This track has no yeah. curbs whatsoever. Um, there's not that many corners at this track, and then there's six or seven, eight corners. Um, two of the corners are, well, one of the corner, uh, the last corner is a pretty big hairpin. Um, if you go wide there, you basically have to go straight on. If you try and take the corner, you're going to launch off a ramp yeah. and hit a fence. Um, but a lot of straights here, so... I think that's where we'll be seeing most of the passes here today at Longford. But I think we had a big uh, we had a big crash at the start last time. I think um, three or four drivers were involved, and in turn one, there was a few drivers involved as well. Yeah. So uh, most of the top drivers were involved in the crash. Even Mazarek, he that rings a bell. He was involved. Yeah. 
Azurak, uh... John van de Geese itself, you know. He got a stop, uh... uh drive through penalty because of the, uh... The first corner incident, you know. Yep. Which, um... When you're commenting, you don't really find out until after the race because it's very hard to to keep track of uh, everything going on. It's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on, you know. I can't remember the turnout, but I think we've got more drivers today. Oh yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. We actually have different liveries on the grid today. So Gert uh, Van Osh, I'm just going to say Van Osh because it's a quite difficult name to pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> uh, has a black and blue livery, which is very, very different. Uh, it looks actually quite nice. Yeah. Uh, kind of retro. Um, he's got a livery. A lot of drivers still running the red and white McLaren uh, Marlboro livery, I think it is, uh, which is stock in the game. Um, there's a pink car somewhere. Not quite sure who's driving that. Uh, but yeah, some drivers running uh, with the custom liveries, which is good because it means that we can actually tell drivers apart. Um, yeah, that's warm up over. So we now have uh, name ind identification where the camera is focusing on. That was a request from last rounds, and uh, we now got that. So be able to tell who we're uh, focusing on in the race since a lot of the liveries are very similar or not even very similar basically the same so yeah basically the same yeah so the drivers are on the grid uh, I'm gonna go through the grid uh, drivers still need to line up but Roberto Bali on pole ahead of Van Osh, uh, John van der Geest, Paul Anstey, uh, Aidan Blake, Henry Meetenen, Glenn Mulholland, Philip Pilcher, Pitchler, uh, Genders and Rob Milken rounds out the top 10. Uh, quite a lot of drivers on the grid today, but the lights are just about to go out. As the lights out and away we go, Bali gets a fantastic start off the line and uh, continues in first ahead of the rest of the pack. Seems to be a clean start so far, uh, Van Osh in second. It's very, getting very hectic down the grid. There's been contact further back. Oh my god, there's a oh huge crash. Wow. That was a huge crash. There's a map. Uh, are we, are we going to restart? <laughs> that was a massive crash. There's an absolute pile up at the back. I think about 10 to over 10 cars were involved there. I saw a car flying and flames as well. Um, it seems that a lot of drivers got caught up in that crash. Um, it was John Van de Geest caught up in that crash too. Oh yeah, he lost the wheel and blew his engine. That's so unfortunate. Pascal Bauer too involved in that crash. You see yeah, Jens John Van de lost track. the wheels, so he's out of the race. His engines are on fire as well. Jens Roos is off the track. Roger. The Australian wilderness. Roger, Roger Hens and uh, Henry Mietten and without a, a front clip. Oof, that's very Martin unfortunate. Martin McLean is the last car without damage, I think. Yeah. Ben Mulholland has... Uh, did he lose his front wing? I thought he lost his front wing. Oh, he has lost his front wing. He's gone straight on at the hairpin there, has to, has to turn the car around quickly, but very, very messy start, just as we saw in um, Bridgehampton, just an absolute pile-up. Very similar to Bridgehampton, yeah. Paul Anstey's actually lost his front wing as well, he's in fifth currently. A lot of drivers need to go back to the pits. Uh, as John van der Beek leaves the server, his race is over, unfortunately. Glenn Mulholland also, also at the race with uh, Look at the battle suspension for damage. First position. Van Osh and uh, Roberto Bali. I think Van Osh just about got ahead. Um, I think Van Osh got slipstream, just managed to slipstream yeah. past, and it's coming through the last corner right now. Um, it's going to be Van Osh heading on to uh, lap 3, I think. Um, ahead of Roberto Bali, so change for the lead there uh, after we got caught up with all that drama at the start. Anstey's heading back into the pits for repairs. Andrew Williams should start going into pit 2 for repairs. We see uh, Eric Klein with a lot of damage to you without his front clip. No, not Eric Klein, no, no. That's, uh, yeah, Andrew Williams on the not Tony, Rob Milliken, yeah, without a front clip too. 
lot of cars into the pits. It's Paul Anstey pits? No. No, he hasn't. He hasn't, yeah. But he's gone round again without a front... Well, I guess downforce isn't really necessary in these cars, but at the same time I thought you would lose a lot of time. Very interesting decision there, going for the sort of low downforce uh, wing, or oh, yeah. lack of wing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you see he's locking up there, um, so might be struggling on the brakes just a little bit, but he didn't decide to pit, which is very, very interesting. I don't think there's a rule about pitting if you do lose your front wing, but at the same time you're going to lose a lot of pace if you do um, lose your front wing and don't pit. This track is just so narrow, I almost wince every time people go for an overtake because it's just, there's not a lot of room with cars being that wide, especially with the back tyres being that wide. Oh, Tony Tavite going straight. Ooh. Nah, he's going to lose a lot of time, down to 14th at least. Uh, might even be 15th by the time he recovers. He's 14th, yeah. And he should lose only 4 positions, but even that. Didn't get that's any damage at least. Oh, yeah. Didn't get any damage, so that's a good thing. It's a long race, so if you go wide like that, you can still make it back. Out front, Van Osh is actually still gapping Bali. There's a gap of 1.3 seconds as we end the first five minutes of this very chaotic race so far. Uh, the gaps are stretching out a little bit, as to be expected um, with a race like this. I think the closest cars on track are Grukok and K.O. Michaels. Uh, see Martin, Ed Jones and Paul Anstey too, battling for 10th position. Anstey with, was still without a front wing, so... Locking up really, really hard right there. As to be expected though, if you lose your front wing, you're not going to have as much front downforce. Oh your yeah. brakes aren't going to work as well, and, and I think downforce he's, he's going to pit now. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is pitting, okay. It makes sense. It's a, it's a long race, you may as well pit. Yeah. And look at the battle for 4th uh, position, Johnny Gutierrez and Michal Mazzarek right there. Less than a second apart from each other. I think Mazzarek might be able to go for the move here. Gutierrez is going to the inside to defend, Mazarek's going to sweep around the outside. And it's a fairly easy move, I think Gutierrez might have let him through there, not wanting to battle too much. But fairly easy move for um, Mazarek. And he moves up into 4th. Uh, although there's a 10 second gap to third up ahead, so quite a gap to uh, bring back to Aiden Blake up ahead. I think Aiden's oh, yeah. actually closed in on second. Running just about similar pace between Aiden Blake and Roberto Bali in second. Bali in a mid two minute one uh, lap, and Aiden also mid sort of two minute one lap, so very, very long lap here on this circuit, long for two minutes. Martin McLuhan going off the track there, kicking out dirt. Hey, hey Michael's guys. actually lost his front wing. Hello. Hi, John. Yes, John. I just right. came in to apologize. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a very messy start. <laughs> it's, oh, that, that was all me. I watched the replay and I went a bit to the, to the right side of the track. And I did exactly what I cautioned, cautioned people to do. That was we, um, yeah, I was kind of expecting a start because I, I saw one car go off and then I don't know, there was a massive pile up Ooh. and there was flames. But I was on the left side and then I moved a little bit to the right. And so the other guy was going straight as an, as an arrow and he didn't do anything wrong. It, it was all my bad. So I really apologize to everybody who uh, got caught up in that pile up. Place. Just in terms of Aiden Blake's gone off the circuit, um, I think he's got damage, but he's not lost a position. Um, since there was quite a bit of time to Maserick behind, but missed mistake there from Blake. Just past a lapped car. But that's it. I'll leave you guys to it. Bye bye. Bye bye, John. User disconnected from your channel. Yeah, really big pile up as I expected, you know. Not sure who's the closest drivers right now, but uh, a few mistakes from drivers starting to come in. Um, I believe when John Van Der Geest was talking, we not sure if he caught the um, incident between Michaels. 
Uh, yeah, I saw that, yeah. He lost his front wing and he um, he almost collected two other drivers um, at one of the twisty sections on the circuit, I believe it was, mm. at uh, Neary Corner, that part of the track. Currently the closest drivers are Mazurek and Aiden, I think. Uh, yes, I believe so. It's Maserick and Aiden go side by side, and Maserick has to back out there. I'm not sure what happened there. I think he might have got a tire in the grass. Oh, yeah, he he, he got a tire in the grass. Locked tire in the grass, and then tried to brake and just went straight on. Yeah. Very unfortunate. The only good to hear is actually almost slipped through there, um, taking position from Maserick, but didn't really have the run. Look at Eric Klein closing on 20 Tavitti, yeah. Eric Klein closing up. The straights are very long, the circuit, so if you get a good run out of the corner and you can really take advantage of the slipstream, try and get a move um, on the straight into the corners, because I really, really don't really <laughs> want to be um, trying to outbreak someone on this circuit. Getting very close at the hairpin. Eric Klein a little bit uh, wide around the corner. I think he had to back up a little bit because he got so close to Salviti in front. And that might calm out a little bit. Okay, another battle is forming, which is a battle for sick, which is Philip Pichel and Bill Gricock. Yep. Close to each other. Got six tenths between them. Gricock's gonna pull up to the inside. Not quite close enough to make a move into the braking zone there, but Pulling uh, very close in the slipstream on the straights. Uh, how many other battles are on track? Uh, battle between Maserick and Aiden Blake. Um, Maserick caught up to the back of Aiden Blake. I think uh, Aiden made another mistake. Last up was a 2 minute 9, so he went off somewhere on the track. Not sure where. But. Maserick's closing in close little by little, yeah. 0.5 seconds. Very close on the track there. Point three seconds. Blake's actually going to the inside very, oh, yeah. very early to defend, and I'm not sure why because all you're doing is defending clean air and letting Maserick onto the racing line where the rubber is. And Ooh. Not quite enough room there. I think Maserick might have the run though out of the last corner to make a move on Blake here though. Not quite a straight here, it's a very like fast right hand kink that they're going through right now. And you're not really a place for passing, neither is this left hand corner coming up, which is downhill. He's going to close up, but this isn't really a passing place. Maserak being a little bit cautious and smart, too, you know, he's waiting for an opportunity at a long straight. We are approaching. I think he knows that he's season. faster, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. So, what's the point in risking a move down the inside trying to do a sort of Ricardo style dive bomb if you <laughs> can just get him on the straight? Like, yeah. Let's see Blake make a mistake there, hitting a tire on the inside of the corner. Oh, the it's going to be a fairly attack. easy move. These cars are so wide, it's very easy to defend. Maserick goes to the outside, and they're side by side. Maserick still isn't head yet. Coming up to... Oh, contact between Blake and Maserick. And Blake didn't crash. That was interesting. Wow. Cut away, I think, I think that, was, that was a little bit of... Ping issue? Might have been ping. On my yeah. side, it looked like they banged wheels and, yeah. the, and the camera my cut away, too. and I thought Blake was going to go into a wall. But, uh, yeah, my side too, yeah. Well, I, I even saw <laughs> objects flying, you know. But yeah, I, I was, guess that's, that's quite not interesting. The case. Look at Blake with a good run out of the uh, the corner there. He's on Close the enough to make a move here. And try around the other side, this left hander. Is going to be the inside of the next hand corner, the right hander at uh, Mountford Corner. The last corner on the circuit, I think. Trying to steal as much slipstream as possible. The straights are so long, I think he's running out of uh, oh, very close in the braking zone. Great move from Blake there, going around the outside. Can he get it stopped just about? Blake moves up into third ahead of Maserat. It's a very, very good battle actually between the two. Um, pretty clean too. A little bit of a uh, might be a little bit of contact earlier, but uh, good battle. Paul Ansi's out the race with an engine blowout, uh, so that might have been him downshifting far too quickly.
the only real battle actually happening on track between Blake and Mazarek. Blake's actually running the McLaren Shadow Skin, which is why it's different. Oh yeah. I think Blake's got a little bit of momentum now, he's pulling the gap a little bit, but Mazarek's keeping with him. He'll be getting slipped in at this point, but as we saw in Bridgehampton... Mazarek is closing in a little bit. As we saw in Bridgehampton, like, Slipstream wasn't super effective. You, need, you really need to be very close just to sort of get within distance of making a move. But uh, Mazarek's keeping with him here. Yeah. Uh, and we see another DNF by Johnny Gutierrez. I don't know what happened. Because we are focusing Damage. on the shadow, of course. But Johnny Gutierrez was DNF'd out of the race. Uh, he lost his front wing earlier in the lap and then he just pulled off. Yeah. So, not sure what happened there. Unfortunate, though. A well, not even a course of the way into this race, and already quite a few uh, <laughs> DNFers. It's yeah. just a DNF series, but quite sad to see at the same time. Look at Mazarek with the slipstream. Closing in really quite fast. Close enough. Oh, yeah, he is, yeah. Closing really, really fast. I'm gonna try up the inside. Aiden blocks. Ooh, that's dangerous, man. Blake, yeah, he's. He's perfectly entitled to cover him off like that, but trying to go around the outside, Mazarek trying to hang around the outside, get cut back, but Blake's just Ooh. covering the right place. Both of them getting a lot of wheel spin out of the last corner, and it's going to be a drag race down to the first corner as they go across the start finish line. Mazarek in the slipstream, once again, this isn't really an overtaking spot down into this right hand kink. I think at the moment he's just trying to force Blake into a mistake. Very easy to do on a, a difficult track like this with difficult cars to drive. We have Mazarek being patient, pulling off a I little think, bit. I think that's good though. Like you don't really, it's, there's 45 minutes left, there's no, uh, it's not the last lap, so you don't really need to go for like yeah. Banzai moves. If I were in uh, Mihal Mazarek skin, I would just stay off out of the battle, you know. Just follow Aiden as close as I can. Turk on in the slipstream because I'm saving fuel, I'm saving, you know, tire. Because I'm on the slipstream, you know. And just yep. break a little bit earlier just to avoid them, uh, avoid a crash or anything, you know. Stay there. Well, I, th I, think, I, just, I think at the same time it's also much more fun following a driver than yeah. rather than being followed. In this situation, I'd oh, much yeah. rather be in Mazarek's situation where you can have a driver in front of you for reference, for the braking, for the turning. Uh, it's just so much easier as Mazarek locks up there, it goes a little bit late. Um, but yes, yeah, it's, it's so much more fun following a driver, hunting them down and trying to force them into a mistake rather than you being in the front and having to look back. Bit of psychological stuff there, but... Mazarek dropping a little bit back after that mistake, just locked up, heading into the corner, and that forced him wide. I believe it's the closest cars on track right now. Van Orff still leading the race as we go 16 minutes into the race. I think really the closest consistent times. Yeah, I think the closest cars in this track is Aiden Blake and Meha Mazarek for now, you know. Ali's got the pace, but at the same time, he's not as consistent as Van Osh. Yeah. Andrew Williams and James Rose, they had a little moment there. Not James Rose, Pascal Bauer. They had a little moment there for the 12th position. I think Andrew is going to attack on the next straight. Getting very leery under the braking there. Might be might be close enough to Bauer to make a move here. Back into the slipstream. He's not closing too much. He's gone to the inside, but I don't think he's quite close enough. Almost touched along the straight, which was interesting. And Andrew Williams, can he get it slowed down? Yes, he can. So he's up into 12th. And ahead of Pascal Bauer. Oh, Mazarek going wide, losing all of his momentum. Uh, we saw that battle, Andrew Williams and Pascal Bauer. 
And uh, right behind them, there's Aiden Blake and Michal Mazarek. So Michal Mazarek is down two seconds from when uh, Aiden Blake because of his uh, little mistake there. But since this track is really, you know, really long and has a lot of straights, uh, we should see Aiden Blake being a little bit uh, uh, caught up in a little bit in the traffic, you know, from Pascal Bauer. Yeah, if you, if you hit the traffic at the wrong point of the track, it's going to cost you a lot of time. Um, yeah, Aiden Blake, uh, he seems to have just got a bit of momentum right now. His two past lap times, two last lap times are... Pascal Bauer really wide, oh, almost going off track. Letting him through here, which is a sensible thing to do. Yeah, Blake's last... Uh, Three lap times, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. So he's very, very consistent right now. So um, a few laps into the race, I think he's got the consistency with Mazarek right now. Who's uh, dropped back a fair bit now. Look, Andrew Williams attacking Kyle M Michels for 11th place. Go down the inside. Yeah, I mean, he just got the run there. Just fairly easy move down the inside. Can he get it slowed down? Just about, yep. So Andrew Williams up until 11, so he's making Ooh. moves. And uh, Aiden Blake had a little mistake, crashed onto the tree. Could it couldn't slow down as much as he wanted. We have Mazarek now in third position. Aiden Blake a little bit off, like a two second behind Mazarek now. That's what I was saying earlier, though. It's, it, it's fine if you're fast, but if you're fast and you're making mistakes like that, you're just gonna lose so much time. Yeah. Like doesn't seem to have damaged in the steering. The steering seems straight. They are coming up to lapped cars though, as Mazarek has to go around the lapped car who just span in front of him. I believe that was Keo Michaels, uh, who has stuck at the last corner, I believe. Corner? No, I think it's second last corner. Uh, I think that was Pascal and Mazarek going off track, losing all Mazarek his speed. Mazarek just let Blake pass for some reason. Yeah. I think he wants to follow Blake, you know? Yeah. Mm, interesting. The up out front is, uh, between Van Osh and Bali has moved to 7.7 sec seconds, so... Bali seems to be in control. Not Bali, uh, Van Osh seems to be in control. Oh, yeah. I believe he's the first man to actually dip down into the um, below the two minute uh, sort of level. 159.7, which I believe is the fastest lap this race. Might be wrong. Oh yeah, 159.7, the fastest lap of this race. By uh, Jan van, Ro van Osh. I believe the times in qualifying were 57s, 58s, so. 57s, yeah. Yeah, 57 so nine. good pace from Van Osh there with uh, full race fuel. Obviously, no pit stops during this race. Uh, I hear contact further behind somewhere. Oh, uh, okay, Michael's a span and lost a wheel. So he will have to retire from this race. Front wing getting hit by oh, Nurkana. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he lost a wheel. That's unfortunate. I wonder if he's going to try and limp it back to the pit so they Probably, can, yeah. Uh, Duct tape a wheel back onto the car. A long way to go. It's yeah. um, he's still driving car. though, so I think he's gonna that limp off back the track there. Oh yeah, cars off track. Who's that? Uh, Philip Pitchler. Philip Philip Pitchler, Six. yeah. And I believe he's got it stuck in a wall. Some poor person's uh, fence Ooh. there. That's very unfortunate. Norman Bruce and is closing very fast. He's not gonna get out of that. End up blowing his engine if he over revs it like that as well. Yeah, Bruce he's is getting gonna get out. past here. Yeah. Coming through the corner and you can see Pitchler just stuck in the wall. He's trying to rev it just to get all that. He's stuck in the um, in the fence. Not sure if he's got a front wing. Ed Jones just passing Pitchler now. Oh, oh, I, managed to get free. oh and Eric Klein yep. just spun. Lost his front wing. Look at that. Tenth position. Pitchler's managed Eric to get Klein. free, he's back in the race, although his engine is smoking. Um, he did lose two positions, but at least he's still running. He didn't have to, or he didn't lose his front wing, which is fortunate. His engine's really, really hot now. Uh, Rob Milliken's gone off the circuit. His front wing. 
Yes, well, he Rob has. Milliken. Oh yeah. Yeah, and tenth. Rob Milliken and Eric Klein. Eric Klein ninth. A lot of drivers losing the front wings today. Oh yeah. Like, I think um, people are on the limits. Uh, they're on the limits for like breaks today. Um, a lot of drivers locking up, going straight, and if you go straight and still try to make the corner, you're gonna go into like a building or uh, into a fence or something, and or end up like just like, Rob, just like Rob Milliken, you know? Just yeah, not, and not it seems Rob to be Milliken very similar Philip mistakes. Pitchley, yeah. Very similar mistakes, just all this sort of heavy braking zones. And look at that oh. match, Miha Matarek once again, better than with Aiden Blake, they're really close to each other. Matarek letting off the throttle a little bit. I don't know what's happened there. He lost a second already? Just for letting off the throttle. I don't know what happened. I wonder if he's just happy following Blake. And probably he's yes. Attack later. Me knowing Matarek, probably yes. Because it's not the best track for battling. I really wouldn't want to battle a car like side by side the entire lap. Because yeah. it's just so tight and dangerous this track. So he might just be sitting here, might just be comfortable just saving tires, saving fuel, um, which is the first strategy to do, it's going to lose you a little bit of time, but at the same time you're not going to crash, and it's gonna be, throughout this race we've had a lot of crashes. Um, oh, that's seven drivers DNF on this track. Pitchler in the pits now. Oh, when Aiden Blake almost crashing into the back of, uh, of Rob Milliken. Oh, contact between Masrek oh, oh, and Blake. Oh no. That seemed to be a bit of a mis misunderstanding from Blake. Um, Blake was trying to get through the corner. I don't, I don't know if he s didn't see Masrek in the mirrors, but uh, Masrek having a slight tap into the fence. Don't think he's got too much damage. Um, Pitchler in the pits. Uh, he's just coming out of the pits right now. His car seems to have a bit of steering damage. That might just be me. Yeah, his car has got a bit of damage. Yeah, it looks like it, yeah. And when he turns into the corner, it's, it's just understeering. So I think he's got suspension damage. The steering seems to be straight, but hard doesn't look like it wants to do what he wants it to. Masaryk in the slipstream of Blake, though. Closing in. Will he try and make a move this time? Uh, Blake going to the middle of the track, which is fair. As you can see, Masaryk can't <laughs> do anything. He's just sitting back, going off the throttle. The only way that Masaryk's really going to get past is um, Blake making a mistake, I think. Blake figured it out. How to defend on this track now. <laughs> just stay in the middle of the track. These cars are really wide. You can defend it that, that way easily. I bet Masaryk is having a really, really good laugh behind his wheel now. <laughs> Yeah, that would be, because all, all Blake's doing is just sitting in the middle of the track, the cars are that wide and the track's that narrow that you can't, you can't do anything at this stage. Like, all Blake has to do, unless... <laughs> Look at <laughs> that! <by> <laughs> side. Mansell and Senna going this way and that. I think Masrex managed to get past though. Yeah, he did. Uh, just about, they're side by side. Uh, I'm not sure if Blake's running less downforce or better gears or something, but... Masaryk getting past just about, Blake manages to fight back down the inside, going wheel to wheel, Masaryk goes a little bit too fast in the corner, understeers off and Blake is back ahead, but <laughs> interesting battle between these two. Once again. Um, once again Blake's just going to sit in the middle of the track, which is fair enough, not legal, you can do that if you want, but uh, I'm not sure if Masaryk's going to be uh, laughing right now or annoyed that he can't get past Blake. <laughs> And, uh, and look Walk at Van Osh. Oh, oh Masrek hit the wall. Lost his Masrek hit the wall, and has he lost his? Yes, he has. Oh, and Bill Grucock's gonna catch up to the back of him. Doesn't have to let him through, but it'd be nice if Masrek did. Yeah, he's pulling off to say that's a shame because Masrek and Blake were having a great battle there. We're actually probably the highlight of the race so far. Oh yeah. Uh, but Absolutely, yeah, shame for yeah. Masaryk, and he's got to go all the way around the 7.2 km circuit just to get back to the pits and repair. Uh, he might come might come out in 7th, 8th, guessing. He's the front end of the car lifting off there as he go, goes over the railway tracks. 
front end of the car just lifted off because he doesn't have a front wing. Oh yeah, that, that's the lack of downforce. You can see on the straight uh, his car, his front end is lifting, you know. Yeah, which he goes makes sense front, actually. Like the straight. And uh, here from the uh, live timings, uh, Von Osh just did a 59.6 and he's off on a fast lap. The tenth, uh, just about a tenth faster than his fastest lap of yeah. the race previously. And it showed me here that Van Osh is in a fast lap already, you know. Just now going through the start finish line. And no, that, that wasn't quite good enough to pass his uh, 59.6. But anyways, anyways, if it was Van Osh, I wouldn't really be pushing uh, like 100%, there's no point, he's got 11.3 second gap. Mm -hmm. uh, so all you're going to really be doing is if you, uh, if you push is maybe make a mistake, maybe going wide, if you make if you go wide you might hit a wall, lose your front wing, you lose the rift, so it's like, he's got the pace advantage over Bally, so there's not really any point of, uh, of pushing. Look at Jens Ross, uh, battling with Andrew Williams for 8th position, and uh, Neha Mazurek uh, going pit, going to pits. I see in the pits just now. Uh, Bauer is pulling off the track. Might be letting, yeah, if he's letting past a lap driver. Mazurek in the pits. He's still in fifth. Uh, that is Eric Klein in the background, so he's not going to lose that position. The gap between Mazurek and the cars behind were huge. Oh yeah. So he might only lose a position or two depending on how long the damage takes to. Here, it was a front wing, it might be suspension damage as well. Caitlin Penny in the chat asking how is everyone doing? Um, enjoying myself? I, I kind of enjoy watching these races because how chaotic they are. Part of the fun, I guess. And Madurak left pits with... Uh, he kept his fifth position. Kept fifth, so... That is interesting. I thought he was going to come out in 7th, 8th, and he uh, came out in 5th, so didn't lose that much, well, not that many positions, to be honest. Tony Telviti is... Still in last, which is fair enough, but uh, battling with. Not battling at the moment, it's just a lapsed car, I think. Car in seventh, Ed Jones, okay. Most of cars on track at the moment. Um, not many cars actually close to each other on track. Because there's an eight second gap between Blake and Krukok, but that is just about it. There's like a 10 second gap between Ed Jones and Norman Bruce too. Actually, uh, Jens, Roos and, and Andrew, Andrew Williams. Williams. Yeah, Probably the closest cars on track. I'm guessing uh, it says one plus one lap, so I can't see the gap. I'm guessing it's about 3-4 seconds between those yeah, two. Yeah, it's 3.2 seconds. Uh, Jens Roos was really close to Andrew Williams, but he uh, got into the throttle a little bit too early to the second uh, set of corners there, under underneath the bridge, and uh, he almost spun the car and lost a lot of time. I think there's a big uh, pace difference between a lot of drivers, because Go 100% and risk a crash, or you can sort of back off a little bit. But if you back off, um, I'm just looking at the lap times between Talviti. Talviti, like, his best is a 2 minute 2. Vanosh up ahead is doing sort of 2 minute deads, so about 2 seconds, and the lap which is 2 minutes is not too different, I think. Yeah. Like, not too varied. Pascal Bauer doing 2 minute 6s, uh, 2 minute 4s, further off, but uh, I think some drivers just want to finish the race, which is fair enough, if you, if you finish, um, you get points, of course you don't get points if you have a crash, and there's a lot of drivers who have retired from this race, 
I think a lot of drivers really suffered from that lap one crash. To be honest, that's probably why they retired. We have seven drivers retired. They're eight actually. Eight. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, Kyle Michaels McGills. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Uh, last person to retire. Um, yeah, that that lap one crash. That might be some of the craziest stuff I've seen in a, in a sim racing thing. Uh, I saw one car go off, and they went up the embankment, came back on track, and I just knew there was going to pile up. Very similar to um, two weeks ago in Bridgehampton, where just one car spammed and caused and, like basically a chain reaction in terms of crashes. Seven second gap between uh, Rukok and Blake up ahead. Rukok's last lap was a 2 minute 4, uh, Blake's last lap was a 2 minute 5, so pretty close in terms of pace, a tenth between them. Just over halfway through this race, Fanosh leads by 12 seconds over Roberto Bali, uh, Aiden Blake, Bill Krukok and Michel and Michel Mazarek. Uh, Been over there? Still tire smoke somewhere. Absolutely impossible to keep track of everyone in this race because there's a... Uh, happening. Oh yeah, and the track is so big, you know. You can't yeah, really it's... see uh, uh, people making mistakes from like uh, others, other mirrors, you know. I'm just switching between drivers and I just, if I hear contact, I'll try and find where it is, but sometimes I'm just, there's so many drivers yeah. on track at the moment and the track's so big it's kind of hard to spot. Oh, and um, um, uh, Michal Matarek there. doing a 1 minute 59 666. Which is two thousand of the beast. <laughs> two thousand uh, two thousands of uh, Van Osh's time. Fastest lap, you know. I wonder if Mazarek is getting in the groove, although his last lap time before that was a two minute three. So he's going quickly at the moment. Is, is he just pushing one hundred percent you think, just to try and close that gap? I think yeah. I mean he's the gap, he's fifty one oh, seconds big. between uh uh, him, it, it, there's like 51 seconds uh, in 25 minutes. That's that's a tall order unless uh, well, it's highly possible actually. Grukok makes a mistake. Um, even if Blake makes a mistake, he's only seven seconds ahead of Grukok. If they yeah. make mistakes, I'm sure Mazarek could close up. Mazarek was 54 seconds in the last lap. He's now 51.4. So yeah, okay. I think that's achievable. It, de it depends on mistakes, I think. On yeah. pure pace, I don't think mazarek has got the time to do it. Um, it's 25 minutes left. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's enough time to do it. I'm trying to see if there's any actual battles on track. Andrew Williams, uh, actually having a really good race up into 8th. He was... Um, last time we saw him on track was... I think he was 11th or 12th, making yeah, 12th, moves. Yeah. Uh, making really good moves, out breaking people actually... Matarek with the For new fastest lap of the track, 159.111. Uh, yeah, it was a spinner up ahead though, Eric Klein blocking yeah. the track um, at the viaduct. Oh, and we oh, have good. a battle, Ed Jones and Norman Bruce. We have a battle. Norman Bruce just about maybe a second or two behind. They were 0.1 second from each other. Oh, I think Norman Bruce has a little problem on this car. Oh I'm no. With him. Doesn't seem that bad. I think oh, that's only uh, tires or steering maybe? Uh, steering is straight but his car seems to be wanting to pull slightly to the left uh, mm. just from my view. Doesn't look that bad though. Oh yeah, that's oh, tires. Oh, it goes straight on though. That's tires, yeah. They're really flat spot. Yeah, that, that would make sense actually. And this is RF2, so if you flat spot your tires and you're running high force feedback, it basically becomes um, Shaky mess. Uh, a jackhammer that you're holding. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ask, me, ask me how I know it. <laughs> it. It's not a fun experience, but oh, yeah, I guess not. it's uh, realistic. Mm -hmm. I 
one by Masrek. That is very quick, and he did a 59.6. This lap isn't going to be as good because he had to go around Eric Klein. Uh, but 59.1 is very fast. Half a second faster than Van Osh, although Van Osh is 1 minute and 34 seconds up the road. So. Ed Jones coming up to the back of a back marker. I'm not sure if I wanted to drive here, if I was living in the 70s and if I was a racing driver, or in the 60s anyway. Um, this seems like an absolute death trap, well, I guess. Oh I yeah. What the tracks in the 60s were death traps. I would probably back out from this round, you know, just let the scary stuff happen. I would be watching from the from the pit, you know. <laughs> yeah, like I see, like modern F1 drivers, they're brave just because of the speed and like if you crash, you might get hurt and stuff. But yeah, like, but they they know it's safe, you know. That's why they. Yeah, push if you have the a crash now, now you're like that, it's yeah. like a 99% chance you're gonna be safe, but like drivers back then like holy crap but the balls you must have had to drive these things around circuits like this I wonder like why this car has only one seat because clearly you can see the driver needs a seat for him and a, need for a seat for his balls because yeah. Jesus Christ this is too much yeah. <laughs> Andrew Williams well, Andrew having a spin spinning. Oh, no. at the viaduct um, I think that was a back marker no, oh, that no, was no one Bruce. Position. It was no yeah, Bruce. Norman Bruce. That's very. That's Jens Roos closing it up to the back of him because that. Uh, well, I wouldn't say mistake by Williams, but a uh, bit of a misunderstanding between him and Bruce. Jens Roos sure going to try to capitalize on that. I think he's got he got into the brakes a little bit too much. The car over rotated and he spun. So Jens Roos closing up to the back of Williams once again. Uh, gaps opened up a little bit just because I think Roos got a little bit surprised by it. But uh, all battles on track at the moment. Closest cars I think are clearly Williams and Roos. Gap up front between Van Osh and Bally is 19 seconds now. It's crazy. Just I think it's a second or two every single lap. Just. Yeah, the last three laps by Van Osher on the sort of low to well, mid on pits. I don't know what happened. He's on pits. His car is still running. Yeah, he is. He lost his front wing again. Oh no. Uh, rewind, try and see where it was. Oh, he just... That's the thing, I was saying earlier, drivers locking up, going deep into the corner. Actually, he didn't, he, he didn't even lock up, he hit the tyre on the inside and it bounced his car into um, a telephone mast. Look at that, Rob, Millican, Rob Millican's McLaren is smoking. Rob Millican. I think he downshifted too hard and it hurt this car a little bit. Yep, as long as he doesn't over rev the engine, uh, you'll be fine, just short shift. Letting people through. Fair enough. It's smoking quite a lot. Oh yeah. Uh, Jens Roos and Andrew Williams, they're close-ish to each other. And second, now <laughs> two seconds apart from each other. Uh, I guess it's that's not, not really hope for any battles, you know? <laughs> I think Jens Roos is just, he's trying not to crash, which is fair enough. Um, just looking at the stream chat now, uh, MK3424, I believe that's Kyle Michaels, um, said, try to do a real Villeneuve, did not work. <laughs> <laughs> that's Masrek into the pits for the second time this race, and he's come out, in, he's still in fifth, which is crazy. It, it just shows the gap between all the drivers. Oh yeah, uh, and from three laps, uh, uh, three laps from now, Andrew Williams has closed his gap from uh, uh, Norman Bruce to one and a half second. He was five seconds. 
behind Norman Bruce five, five laps ago. And Norman Bruce is lapping pretty far off the pace. I'm not sure if it's inconsistency or if he's got a problem or something, but Williams yeah. is closing him in very fast. Probably um, tyres, I guess. Just going to point out as well, Milliken's car is still smoking. Um, I don't have high hopes for him finishing this race at this rate because yeah, uh, it's been smoking for about a lap and I'm not sure if that's a car problem or if it's like a subliminal advert for Marlboro. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, it's kind of fitting that a car with a smoking advert is smoking itself. But um, Yeah, it shouldn't really be smoking that much. Like In, in terms of R-Factor 2, if your car smokes, it generally goes away because... In the case, the car the going car's the too room. hot, yeah. But if it's been smoking this long, it means it's overheating quite badly, so I'm not sure if his radiator's too small or something. Andrew Williams! Ooh! Almost too wide in onto the bridge. That's dangerous, mate. Oh, we've seen Williams go for the, the inside. He's looking down the inside, not quite enough room there, and you've got James Roos uh, right behind them, so I think he's just sitting back, seeing if they make a mistake. But I believe this is going to be the move here on this straight uh, as Williams pulls into the slipstream. I believe it's the right hand corner coming up. Williams pulls ahead and he's up into 7th. Can he get it slowed down? This next corner in about 5 seconds. Uh, these straights are so long. Yes he can. So he's up into 7th. Good race from Williams so far. Um, Look at Jens Roos closing really fast. Jens Roos. Not really a space for overtaking at the bridge possibly into this right hander up the hill trying to focus on getting a good exit which he seems to have and going on to the flying really mile now I think it's going to be a fairly clean move if he can just about get the slipstream as we've seen before Norman Bruce sticking to the sort of middle of the track these cars are so wide it's so hard to overtake if you're just placing your car right, or to get some of this more slips, uh, more yeah, more slipstream here because he's running out of momentum. He's gonna try and outbreak down the inside, not quite close enough for that. Just trying to focus on getting a better exit. Is he going to start finish straight? Bit of wheel spin out of the last corner there for Jens Roos. I do believe I'm being calling him Jens Roos. I believe it's Jens Roos. <laughs> Again, it's not really a place for overtaking this downhill right-hander, which goes under the viaduct. Sort of tight and technical section. MK in the chat, the stream chat is saying, got hit by a lap car, lost a wing, repaired it, and then clipped the fence and lost my front wing and... Uh, limped back to pits, pit stop did not fully finish and was sent out without a right front tyre. Uh, oh, Aiden's crashed! DNF? Oh no! Oh, Aiden's crashed at the race, I was reading the chat and I just... Someone in the chat said Aiden crashed, so... Yeah, he just crashed, yeah. Really not sure what happened there. I'm gonna try and rewind it. Went up to the back of Rob Milliken. Car is still smoking. I think he got hit by an invisible wall. I think he got hit by an invisible wall heading uh, over the King's Bridge section of the track. Because he didn't even hit that wall on my screen and his rear wing came off, his front wing came off and... Probably yeah, invisible wall, yeah. Like, and then he, his car just went straight into another wall. That was weird. Like, Aliens, you know. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aliens. Yeah, he says, uh, I'm just reading the stream chat, says he didn't touch the bridge, was shot when he crashed. Yeah, on my screen it didn't look like he hit the bridge either, so it looked like an invisible wall. Uh, Masrek getting past traffic, but it was a proper fight for position there. That yeah, was a shame there, because he was in uh, fourth, and there's only 13 minutes left, so he would have probably finished there. Uh, Masrek quite far behind. Who is now inherited for it? He's been through the pits twice, and he's still going to get a really good finishing position, which is that's very lucky, to be honest. It's it's lucky, but uh, his pace has been really good. So, yep. 
same time. Yeah, like when he came through pits, it was a three minute lap and it was a uh, two minute 38 lap, so he's lost about a minute and a half, roughly. And we have a car stopped on the track. Not really stopped, but having a lot of trouble. It's Rob Milliken. Rob Milliken? Smoking yep. without a front wing and a lot of damage. Oh, I don't think he's going to be able to get that back to the pits. Very that bad. car looks um, dead to me. No rear wing, no front wing, very bad steering damage on a smoking engine. It's just about as damaged the car as you can get. Yeah, Aiden Blake saying in the stream chat, I didn't hit the bridge. Um, yeah, I kind of believe you because on our screen, it didn't look like you did. So oh, yeah. I think it's cool. Well, I don't think Rob Milliken's going to get that car back to the pits because that is bad damage. Going to try, but it's a long way to go. I uh, hope up ahead. Rob Milliken doesn't give up on repairing his car. Uh, because Tony Tavitti is a minute back from uh, from. It's going to you know. take about four minutes to get back to the pits this right? He's, he's Probably, crawling yeah. right. It's, it's a two minute lap around here. It's going to take at least four minutes, five minutes. Doing the right thing. He's not staying on the racing line. He's sort of trying to stay off the racing line to let people through. And came the chat saying no smoking. That's what uh, Ferrari should do for their 2019 F1 car, just have their car all constantly smoke instead of running mission window adverts. Probably do just about the same thing. Definitely see the difference in sort of skill between a lot of drivers, like you see Banosh just constantly in the sort of Mid 59s. He actually did a late 58, 58 and 9. 58 and 9, yeah. Fastest, fastest is that lap the fastest lap of the race? Oh, yeah. yeah. And he's lapping consistent uh, 59 highs and. I just directed a 59 dead, which is close, but not quite close enough. Yeah. And Milliken has retired from the race. Engine, it says, so I'm not sure if it's engine blue. Um, uh, yeah, that was a shame. That's a shame, yeah. Look at James Russo and Ned Jones. Just seen here on the Closest. telemetry here. James Russo and Ned Jones. Really close to each other. It's, this is probably my favourite part of this track. This sort of sweeping section going over the bridge and then oh, it goes yeah. into this heavy braking. It's just so much fun. But, yep, closest, closest battle on track. Jens Roos and Ed Jones battle for 6th position. Um. Norman Bruce is fairly far behind and is dropping back quite a bit. Andrew is going to go for the inside using slipstream to get past though. And it's a fairly easy move for Roos. Again, the slipstream is... Um, Ed Jones going to manage to get the place back with slipstream. Not quite. So actually Andrew is up in 6th. Reaching the closing stage of this race, so 59, uh, 51 minutes into this race, 9 minutes left, and yep, Van Osh still up front, almost 30 seconds now ahead of Bali. Uh, it's actually over 30 seconds at the time of saying this, and he is controlling this race, just as we saw with um, Talviti after that battle in uh, Bridgehampton. Um, <laughs> Look at the uh, uh, YouTube chat. Just watch the start, what the hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was uh, pretty much the same reaction. <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy start. Um, I'm not sure what track is next on the calendar, but I'm fairly sure it's going to be a running theme where we have massive. Um, just uh, gotta follow. Gotta make justice to the name, you know, DNF series. Yeah, uh, it wouldn't be the DNF series without a lot of DNFs, and currently we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, 10 or 11 DNFs, but half the grid um, has DNFed, almost half the grid. Kayo saying, just, yeah, got hit by one of the flying cars. Uh, I see, I saw John Van der Geese going like 25 feet up the air, up in the air, and uh, I saw at least that was two or really, cars going about. really <laughs> wild. Is there any way to add a halo to these cars? Because 
uh, it's pretty unsafe, I think. Oh yeah. Uh, next track is Kyalami, Kyalami. That should be a bit better. Yeah. It's more of a conventional track. Uh, mm -hmm. Bridgehampton is very old school. This track is very old school. This is this is almost sort of 50s, 60s. 67 to be exact. That's 1967, too. really old stuff. Yeah, it's too fast for these cars, I believe. Yeah. Um, Kyalami will suit the cars because it's sort of... Well, it was like a early 60s, mid 60s to sort of late 70s. Um, uh, after Kyalami, there's Bremgarten, which is 1954. Bremgarten. I don't think I've driven that track. So I've I'm never sure. driven that track, yeah. I was just watching Andrew Williams there and he got very out of shape under the viaduct. Uh, pretty much full lock, trying to save the car. Um, so he's going for it, which is good, but uh, at this stage in the race, like, he's got Jensers behind him. Oh, a little bit wide. Um, he's got Jensers behind him, but at the same time, would you really be pushing 100%? Because not going to catch Andrew... not going to catch Maserick ahead, I don't think. That was too big. This is how uh, I'm gonna plug it on the YouTube chat. That's how Bremgarten looks like from the uh, from the top. Ends Roos actually lapping very consistently at the moment. Um, about the same pace as Williams, so these two are basically lapping around about the same sort of time. Oh yeah. They're consistently um, lapping uh, at two minute flats. Yeah, which is fair enough. They're, I think Roos wants to finish fifth at the same time. Um, Williams wants to keep fifth and they're going for it, which is good, but at the same time, if they make a mistake in the last five minutes of the race, and if they DNF, that would be devastating after a 60 minute race. So, Talviti, after winning last uh, the week, well, the race two weeks ago, in 12th, um, fair enough that he's not as much practice as yet. He's not crashed, which is fair enough. His fastest lap is a 59.7. Which is pretty fast, actually, considering yeah, he's is. not had any practice. Um, you want to have a look on Andrew Williams and Jens Roos. They just... Jens Roos just closed the gap by a lot. That was... They point were there. almost two seconds, now they are less than one. Oh, Williams made a mistake last lap. I'm not sure where, but his last lap was a 2 minute 3.9, so almost a 2 minute 4. Uh, so he locked up somewhere, I think. Um, went wide and... That allowed Roos to close up. But if Roos is consistent, if he just pressurizes Williams, then he can probably get past. But kind of running out of time here. Got four minutes left, five minutes left, uh, which is about two laps, depending on when the uh, checkered flag. The gap between Bali and Grucox is only 13 seconds, and I say only 13, but it seems quite close for up front. And Grucock is in the low two minute deads. Uh, Bally is in the minute ones now, so I'm wondering if tire wear is sort of kicked in for him. Probably, yeah. Let's look at the uh, his braking uh, breaking, uh, behavior into the last corner. It's actually coming to Eric Klein, back marker. Uh, depending on where he hits him, it shoots. Oh, yeah, Bali is really suffering from uh, uh, tire wear because he's braking a lot earlier than than uh, usual and he's done one two minute one point nine almost a two minute two but that's tire wear yeah, of course I think yeah it's a combination of tire wear and he's sort of getting to the end of the race I don't think he wants to push I think he he thinks that he's got second in the bag but the gap's only 12 seconds which uh, doesn't seem that much if he make if Bally makes a mistake goes off he's lost second um, Jens Roos. The gap's opened up between him and Williams for uh, fifth. Yeah, Jens Roos just did a two minute one. And uh, Andrew Williams doing a PB, two minute 4.9. 
flat, point one. Well, I think uh, Williams might be responding. And uh, Bill, talking about PB, Bill Grigcock just did a 1 minute 59 seconds, point five, which is his new That's PB for this track. pretty quick. Oh, yeah. Pretty quick. Uh, Kyle Lamy, uh, just reading the stream chat again, it says Kyle Lamy's next. Uh, the original version or the later one, um, uh, I'm assuming original version because the later one is the modern track. It's a uh, Kyle Lamy 1976 for the next round. Yeah, so the, it's basically unchanged in the yeah. 60s and 70s. Good track though, um, should really suit these cars. You see less DNFs there. Um, there's a lot more runoff, and it's there's a lot of really a lot a lot more space, you know. Overall, yeah, it's it's a conventional circuit, so it should be a bit better uh, for racing. Not as many mistakes, not as many DNFs. Uh, Jens is really dropping back from Williams now. Yeah, I think he did a mistake. Alviti off the track. Uh, he has gone off at one of the hairpins and outbraked himself. Doesn't really matter though, he's in last position. Uh, you'll still get points, he's three laps down, but still uh, still in the points. I think we have which points is good. all the way to 20th for this uh, series. Yeah. So. Yeah, a lot of points uh, up for grabs. Did win the last race and he's going to finish 12th. Um, uh, I remember the podium last time. It's definitely John van der Geest third, I think. But it was Talviti winning the race. Um, he's, got he's got 12th today if he finishes there. So uh, he might slip down the order in terms of championship order. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Gap between Bally and Grukov now 8 seconds. Not quite... Not enough time really for Grukov to make a dent on that. Bally's around about the 2 minute 2 deads right now so... Just watching him through the corners and he's backing off a lot like... Pretty much fully lifting off. Look at Van Osh. Uh, he just... He did a two minute one less lap and two minute two less lap. Yeah, he's, uh, he's just. I think he just, has he just finished the race. I think he has. Uh, yeah, he did. That's he just, your so first Van Osh just won um, the sixty minute race around Longford. Um, Bally is not yet finished the race, but we're so caught up in looking at the gaps in Bally and Grucock that we missed Van Osh uh, dominating this race, um, winning by over thirty five seconds, which is a big margin. Mazarek also finished the lap, but a lap, uh, sorry, finished the race almost a lap, or over a lap behind. Lap and 21 seconds as you see Bosch trying to do donuts. <laughs> Bally finished second in the race, Bill Krukok finishing third, uh, just 7 seconds behind, so he closed the gap up. Uh, still a few drivers left to finish because of the gaps and how long this track is. Andrew Williams finishing at 5th, good race from him, he was uh, doing a lot of battles on track, making a lot of moves stick, uh, Jens Roos finishing 6th, just 3 seconds behind Williams, Ed Jones is gonna finish in 7th, coming around the last corner now, Norman Bruce in 8th, Eric Klein 9th, Philip Pitchler in 10th, Pascal Bauer in 11th, and Tony Talviti rounding out um, the race in 12th, so a lot of DNFs. Uh, a lot of DNFs, yeah. A lot of action. It is the DNFs. Very busy yeah, race. A lot of, quite a few battles, uh, which was surprising um, for a track like this. And if you've been watching this stream all the way through, uh, thanks for that. It has been a very long race, 60 minutes. Um, some moments of the race, not much happening. Uh, try to make it as entertaining as possible. Uh, thanks to the people in the chat as well, uh, Caitlin Penny saying well done guys, thanks for the stream, for watching, um, yeah, decent race. Thank you everyone for watching, uh, thanks for the uh, 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 the words on, on chat, you know.
there was this was a very busy busy uh, uh, stream to do. We saw a shit ton of cars just wrecking in the first corner. It was straight, really, you know. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I hope we see a l lot, lot cleaner race in the next one because it's Calum is a close track, you know, legit one, not a street circuit like uh, Long Ford. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Uh, yeah, see you in one week. Is it one week or two weeks? Uh, one, yeah, two weeks basically. Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. And Any the stream started late today because of the um, time change in the UK. So it started an hour later. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah. Uh, any extra words, Mac? I think I've said everything. Um, fairly decent race next time, Kailani. Two weeks. Uh, so if you want to watch that, uh, subscribe to the channel, and um, we'll be live streaming that just as usual. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.